Out of the nearly 500 weapons in Terraria, only 26 are ice, snow, or holiday themed. Each of them vastly outranked by weapons of a similar caliber, making every encounter deadly, each battle a brutally difficult fight for survival, and the game itself nearly unbeatable. And that's in normal mode. In master mode, well, let's just say that it isn't much better. I enter the world, throw away my only weapon, chop down a few trees, then start exploring this wintry wonderland. I make some cactus armor, then head for an ice cave to hopefully find a usable weapon. Right off the bat, I get super lucky, finding a heart crystal, but more importantly, I get my hands on an ice boomerang. I use it to kill an ice slime who kindly drops my first present. And inside is... A handful of blocks I will never be using. Nice. I make a few snowballs to use as a secondary weapon, then get my first death to a dart trap. But before we continue, I figure I should share the actual rules of the challenge. 1. I am only allowed to use the 24 ice, snow, and Christmas themed weapons. 2. I am not allowed to use thorns or inferno potions. And 3. In order to make this at all possible, I'm allowed to use any armor and accessories. But now that you know the rules, I head right back underground to look for platinum and all the other weapons you can get from ice chests. A fairy guides me to a chest that has an ice blade in it. A nice find considering it's one of the three swords I'll be able to use throughout the entirety of this challenge. I also get a viking helmet, find a golden horseshoe, and equip a pair of flurry boots, fully completing the most beautiful and elegant outfit possible. Returning to the surface, I start building up a temporary base camp, yet dusk approaches forcing me to battle my way through the not so silent night. Ward of the above ground, I mine a bit longer allowing me to craft platinum pants, pushing me over the defense threshold needed for the eye of Cthulhu to spawn naturally. No Knowing this, I build a rather quaint yet acceptable boss arena. I do a bit more exploring and get my first present weapons, a handful of star anise. I have no idea what anise means, but they're basically useless thanks to the ice boomerang. I also come across a wand of sparking that I use to craft a wand of frosting. Feeling all geared up, I use a suspicious looking eye, summoning the Eye of Cthulhu. It's a brutally intense and difficult fight for survival. But in the end, the Eye of Cthulhu is defeated, and drops my least favorite accessory in all of Terraria, the Shield of Cthulhu. I love the dashing ability it provides, but hate that it gives the player knockback even with a Cobalt Shield equipped. And despite my hatred of that feature, I do still view it as a must-have for any playthrough. Knowing that I'm not nearly kitted out enough to face the Eater, I once again return to the Ice Caves, where I find an Ice Mirror and a Trap Chest I totally didn't fall for by the way, but more importantly, I find the Snowball Cannon, which is by far the best pre-hard mode holiday weapon. I forge a platinum chest piece, and tired of mining, begin excavating an Eater of Worlds arena. I add a few platforms, and hoping I'm ready, smash a third shadow orb. The Eater awakens, and I know instantly that the arena is way too small for the worm's immense length. I manage to break it into several pieces, but get mauled, and die with the worms still flaunting their remaining 12,000 health. Because my defeat was solely the improperly sized arena's fault, I nearly double it in size. And after finishing off my set of platinum armor, I summon the eater once again. The fight starts off pretty good, but as it divides, things get a bit more dicey. The duel goes on for 9 straight minutes, but finally, after loads of close calls, the eater of worlds is defeated. Next, I want to take out the King Slime. It's clear that a slime rain isn't going to happen anytime soon, so I dive underground in search of a ruby. After nearly half an hour and not one ruby, I come across a gosh dang enchanted sword, which of course the world that I can't even use it in is when I find one. I keep digging around until I manage to find one lone ruby. I grab it, craft a slime crown, and summon the King Goo himself. As expected, it's a pretty anticlimactic fight, and the King Slime is defeated. I've now dealt with what I like to call a declining chefs, leaving only deep Bjonkstigen chefs. And because things are about to get Bjonkstig, I craft a Nightmare Pickaxe and mine Hellstone using an Obsidian Skin Potion. I make myself full Molten Gear, then begin construction on a Skeletron Arena. Unfortunately, a Goblin Army decides to invade before I can finish it. The invasion goes phenomenally. For the Goblins, that is. For me, it goes horrendously. The game clearly knows my weaknesses, as around a million freaking archers are constantly shooting me with arrows. It takes several deaths to complete, but I slowly wear them down and the goblin army retreats. Meaning that I'm now able to find the goblin tinkerer to buy a pair of rocket boots and tinkerer's workbench. Back at the Skeletron Arena, I get my second present weapon, the Red Rider. It's alright, but it simply can't compare with the snowball cannon's speed, making it essentially useless in most situations. I finish the arena and when dusk falls, curse the old man. 
I tend to either bomb or cruise through Skeletron fights. Luckily, I've started to get the patterns down, and the fight goes pretty well. Now, it does take forever due to the pre-boss nature of every single pre-hard mode holiday weapon, but in the end, Skeletron is defeated. I grab a Cobalt Shield from the newly opened dungeon, then head directly into the underground jungle to start a Queen Bee Arena. I locate a hive, and being extremely careful not to break the larva, immediately break the larva. Well, I'm screwed because I literally have no preparations whatsoever. No floor, no potions, no bitches, nothing. Yet by hopping between the two tiny platforms, I slowly whittle away at the queen's health. In return, she consistently lowers my HP. And after 10 minutes of pure insanity, she finally does me in. But I've gotta say, I am mad proud of myself for lasting that long in the first place, and for getting her majesty that low given the circumstances. Still in the jungle, I might not have proper arena without the fear of breaking a larva. It takes a while, but once complete, I awaken the queen bee yet again. The first few minutes are no problem, but my iron skin potion soon runs out, and dashing with bees around is rough. Then, to make my situation even worse, I completely run out of snowballs. But honestly, after our last fight, this isn't too bad and the queen bee is defeated. And what's my reward for enduring that terribly long and annoying fight, you ask? A bunch of crap I can't even use. In the snow biome, I flatten a small area, equipped a pair of hand warmers I got from a present, and summon the deer clubs. The DC has always been an easy fight, but having hand warmers makes it that much easier. And with that, the deer clubs is defeated. The wall of flesh is up next, but I want to have things a bit more organized before entering hard mode. So I build a cozy winter-themed NPC village and home base in the snow. After getting a legendary candy cane sword from a present, that is. But with one of my favorite builds of mine complete, I mine out a elevator and start on what I will soon find to be one of the hardest, longest, and most annoying parts of the entire challenge. Building the hell bridge is, well honestly, it's hell. Because every single one of my weapons does such little damage, the underworld enemies take forever to kill, meaning that it feels like I'm fighting more than I'm actually building. It's excruciatingly repetitive work, and after a few hours, I decide to take a break in the form of summoning a demon of flesh and fear, as a test. A test to determine whether or not this is even possible given the restrictions, and much to my surprise, it actually goes really well. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I misread my notes, apparently it actually went terribly. Sorry about that. Snowballs don't pierce, so 9 times out of 10, they don't even hit the wall. And they certainly don't deal even close to enough damage to keep through generating hungry at bay for long. I try to figure out a plan, but after a minute or two, I check the map. And seeing the damage to distance traveled ratio, teleport home, ending both me and the test. I respawn, but just sit there as I run through all the possible outcomes of the coming conflict. How many did you see? 14,605. How many did we win? One. And for that one, I need an underground ice farm. I find a good place for it, watch a quick waffle time tutorial, and start excavating. But while I do that, allow me to explain what I like to call Operation Schneeballwerfer. The Snowball Launcher, despite its similarity in title, is a bit different from the Snowball Cannon. The Launcher is a placeable weapon that rapidly fires snowballs that do way more damage than if I were to use the cannon. Unfortunately, they only have a 1 in 150 chance of dropping from snowflakes, hence the massive farm I just built, which was phase 1 of Operation Schneeballwerfer. Phase 2 involves a lot of AFKing, so I get everything in order and take a quick 15 minute power nap while the game runs in the background. I returned from my quick 2 hour nap only to find that I didn't get a single launcher, let alone several, which is terrible news for my time management. Yet it's right then, when rethinking all my life choices that led to this moment, I realized the solution has been under my nose this entire time. Snowflinks can only drop three things, the snowball launcher, a compass, and their fur. That third item of which can be used to craft a flink staff, an early game weapon that while having very little damage output would allow me to skip the hungry entirely and go directly for the wall itself. But there are still a few things I need to get ready before my first proper attempt at fighting the wall, such as equipping the feral claws. There, are you happy now comment section? I also place campfires, heart lanterns, and sunflowers along the entire length of the hell bridge. I brew up a few potions and anxious as ever, toss the guide voodoo doll into the fiery depths, awakening the wall of flesh. I target one of its eyes and my flinxes get right to it, fully bypassing the hungry. I try to deal a bit of damage myself, but it really doesn't do anything. I'm able to get the wall past half health, but the leeches and hungry start to overwhelm me, and soon enough, I am killed with the wall still at 6600 health. 
I felt like my damage was decent, but the sheer amount of leeches kept growing until it was impossible to navigate. Yet I know the basic layout of the fight now, so I summon the wall once again. This time I'm able to get it to around a quarter health, but reach the end of the hell bridge and get killed at the world's edge. Overall, I would say that attempt 2 was a success, because now I know that damage wise, this might just be possible. Unfortunately, it also showed for the second time that survival is going to be an equally difficult challenge as dealing enough damage. I expand the bridge to cover nearly the entire span of the world, then, being clean out, I'm forced to collect voodoo dolls. I get 3 practically back to back, so I toss one in the lava. But after a few minutes of fighting the wall, my audio starts to completely glitch out. Worried it would affect the recording, which it didn't by the way, I pause the game to fix it. And for whatever reason, me fixing an unrelated audio issue crashes the game, setting me back before I started the fight, and before I got those three dolls. So lucky old me gets to farm for dolls yet again! Yay! At long last, I managed to get one and use it to fight the wall for the third and a half time. I make my way through the boring first half, but the sheer amount of leeches makes the fight, well honestly, it makes the fight hell. I keep fighting for survival, but dash into a leech, launching me at the wall and sealing my fate. I die with the wall down to only 422 health remaining. So close, and yet so far. Attempt 4 is nearly identical, and I die with the wall at 618, hoping to extend my livableness by shortening the entirety of the fight by increasing my damage output, I make myself a full set of obsidian armor, which increases both the number of links I can have and the damage that they can do. And while this shortens the battle, it doesn't change the outcome of the 5th or the 6th attempts. But then comes attempt number 7. Bet you thought I was gonna win, didn't you? Well, gosh dang it, so did I. But no, of course not. The Shield of Cthulhu just has to make my life... Well, honestly, it makes my life horrible. This loss was so enraging, I literally got out of my chair and paced around my apartment trying not to absolutely lose it. I finally calmed down and, hoping to distract the wall, put on a sexy Mrs. Claus outfit. But apparently it only distracts me because the next two attempts go so terrible, I just give up halfway through my ninth attempt. Wait, SpongeBob! We're not cavemen! We have technology! It didn't work. Thankfully, my 10th attempt goes a bit better. As per usual, I start the fight wearing obsidian armor. Then, when things get a bit too spicy, change it out for my molten set. I get the wall down to 500 health, but the leeches are getting completely out of hand, lowering me down to a quarter HP. I try to dash away from an attack, but once again hit a leech at the last possible second. But incredibly, after so many failed attempts, the wall of flesh is defeated, releasing the spirits and thrusting me into hard mode. I consume the demon's heart, then open my first hard mode present. And waiting within is a snow globe. Being in a state of complete joy and overconfidence in myself, I decided it would be really funny if I used it right then. Spoiler alert, it was not funny. Every enemy in the Legion has so much health, it's insane. Killing even one takes ages, so I die a lot. At least until I start using the hidey hole method, that is. Which works like a charm. A Christmas <laughs> charm. But the thing that really turns the tide is the emrock that gets randomly dropped. And before you even ask, yes, it is a winter weapon. Not only does it only drop in the snow biome, but Amrock is a giant wolf creature from Eskimo legends such as this one. A physically stunted boy seeks to increase his strength, and Amrock appears and wrestles him to the ground with its tail. This causes a number of small bones to fall from the boy's body. The Amrock tells the boy that the bones had prevented his growth. After several days of wrestling with the Amrock, the boy is strong enough to overcome three large bears. If that's not a badass story, I don't know what is. But anyways, it's a winter item. Bite me. This was honestly super lucky because it seriously increases my damage output, allowing me to finish off the Frost Legion and the Blood Moon that follows. With the events over, I head to the Corruption, break a bunch of demon altars, and make my way through the hard mode ore grind, ending by forging myself a full set of adamantite armor. And with that bit of protection, I make my way into the abandoned ice farm where I get a Frost Staff and Frozen Turtle Shell. I did want a few other things, but can't be bothered to get them right now. Instead, I kill an 
ice golem that not only drops a frost core, but an ice feather as well. And after farming up some souls, allows me to craft the cool whip and a pair of frost wings. And just in the nick of time, as party time is over and Skeletron Prime approaches. The SP awakens, but the Eye of Cthulhu arena really isn't cutting it. That combined with my lack of mana and buff potions means that I very quickly die, with the Skeletron still at 47,000 health. The recent defeat fresh on my mind, I start building a hard mode worthy arena, even going so far as lowering the entire sea level to give me more vertical room, hopefully making it so I don't enter low gravity areas while fighting bosses. I finish placing all the platforms, and while grabbing buff blocks, realize that my base looks way too good. So to combat its fantastical appearance, I, for reasons I don't even understand, build an ice cream truck as specialty storage. I don't know what convinced me to make it an ice cream truck, as that has nothing to do with the snowy village. I I think I just heard the word ice and assumed it would fit the theme. Getting back on track while building the thing, a pirate invasion began, and goes surprisingly well. I of course do die several times, but I'm able to successfully destroy a flying Dutchman using the famed hidey hole method, and soon enough the invasion comes to an end, so I get back to doing a bunch of random nonsense until the twins decide it's their turn to interrupt me. I totally forgot about the arena buffs earlier, and while frantically placing campfires, the twins of chaos arrive. I fight for a bit, but not having mana potions makes it really hard to effectively use mana weapons. And as expected, I am defeated. Even though I lost, I did realize that the arena is way too small. So with a bit of work, I expand it, finally buy mana potions, pick up two heart statues underground, and put on a cross necklace because as we all know in our hearts, the real meaning of Christmas isn't Santa Claus, gingerbread cookies, or Mariah Carey. Christmas is really all about things. Buying and selling things. And then flaunting those things by giving people expensive presents we can't afford in order to justify all the terrible and horrible things we've done throughout the rest of the year. Now that's what Christmas is all about. I craft a mana flower, and while trying to get the Philosopher's Stone, the twins awaken once again, and I'm able to kill Greeny without any major mess ups. Yet embarrassing as it is to admit, I die to Red in his second form. I was pretty close to winning that fight, so I summon the twins the very next night, which was apparently a big mistake, as I'm very much off my game. I do kill Greeny, but with one heart to my name, I don't drink a healing potion for over 30 seconds, despite being able to. I finally heal up, but get lasered back down to maximum low. I rush to my heart statue but a zombie is blocking the way, making me miss 40 health, which would have saved me from the laser that kills me a second later. And if I would have survived that laser, I would only have needed to survive another few seconds before I could drink a healing potion, which most likely would have let me kill Red, therefore defeating the twins. But alas, they remain undefeated. Extremely salty about what just happened, I craft up a bunch of peace candles to reduce unwanted zombies from spawning. And when night soon returns, I go in for attempt number four. Fueled by my anger, this fight goes beyond great. I must have entered Ultra Instinct mode or something, because I have no issue dodging in and out of Greenie's attacks. I kill Greenie, leaving only the cowardly Red. And in no time at all, the twins are defeated. I forge myself hallowed headgear and greaves, but don't equip them quite yet. Instead, being on an absolute rampage, I summon Skeletron Prime. Still in the zone, I fear not this mechanical monstrosity. I am untouchable. I am unkillable. I am death. And the mighty Skeletron Prime is defeated, providing me with the exact amount of hallowed bars I need to complete my set of hallowed armor. And while my bloodlust is still unyielding, I know that the Destroyer is stronger yet. Mostly because I already tried to fight him and lost miserably, but you know. Wanting to get the Philosopher's Stone, I wait for what feels like years until I finally get what I came for. I craft the Charm of Myths and summon the Destroyer. Even with my incredible skill, this fight is no joke. Right off the bat, I almost get killed by the ungodly amount of probes. Luckily, I'm able to kill them first. I'm on the brink of death nearly the entire way through. But with seconds till dawn, the Destroyer of Worlds is defeated. Up next is the Queen Slime, so I build the simplest of arenas in the Hallow, summon her in, and immediately forget she can teleport. I survive for a little while, but get absolutely bombarded by a million things in a row. Well, I tried, but wait. Using every fiber of luck and skill I have, with certain death as the consequence for failure, I somehow pull off what is by far the coolest thing I have ever done. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, I have officially peaked. The battle rages on, knocking me down to basically zero health. And yet, once again, I do the impossible. 
And soon after, the most intense boss fight I think I've ever experienced is over, and Her Majesty the Queen Slime is defeated. To celebrate my victory, I finally get to mark something off my bucket list. Yet the journey must go on, so I make my way into the jungle, where I find my first life fruit, then start mining out a Plantera Arena, complete with luxury NPC housing for easy access, and asphalt for improved speed and mobility. But with that, I destroy Plantera's flower, awakening her. And using my masterful rod and cool whip, I get her into her second phase. And after a series of difficult maneuvers, Plantera, my darling, is defeated. I miss her already, especially with what comes next. Being the fool that I am, I decided pretty early on in this challenge that I would get the Staff of the Frost Hydra since it's an ice-themed weapon and I will likely never have another valid reason to get it. So without further ado, please enjoy an incredibly boring 3 hours of my life condensed into an 8 second time lapse. Wow, look, an ice key. Wow, look, an ice chest. Wow, look, the worst biome weapon. Wow, look, you hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Wow, look, me finally destroying the ice cream truck. While the Frost Hydra is cool, what's even cooler is that with Plantera's defeat, I can now do the Frost Moon event, which has each and every one of the remaining weapons. So after gathering a few ectoplasm, I craft a naughty present and summon my first of many Frost Moons. Now, I really do do a lot of them, so to keep this video from reaching several hours in length, here are the condensed versions of all my Frost Moon attempts. Everscream 1 doesn't drop anything. Elfcopters might just be the worst thing to ever exist. Everscream 2 doesn't drop anything. 817 points. Forgot to set my spawn point at the arena. Everscream 3 doesn't drop anything. Everscream 4 drops the Razor Pine, which immensely increases my damage. 727 points. Sand Tank 1 doesn't drop anything. Sand Tank 2 drops the Chain Gun, let's flip and go. 1,400 points. Quick break to make Chlorophyte Bullets, as well as finally get rid of the Wretched Shield of Cthulhu in favor of the incredible, helpful, and not abysmally annoying Tabby. Sand Tanks 4 through 6 don't drop anything. Sand Tank 7 drops an Elf Melter that I pick up after dying to an Ice Queen. 2,327 points. Another quick break to make Shroomite Armor, officially marking my transition from Mage to Ranger. Can't stand that with Chlorophyte Bullets, I have basically no control over where they go. 1,570 points. The third and final sword is dropped by an Everscream. 2,327 points. With mere seconds till daylight, the Ice Queen is defeated, and against all odds, drops the one weapon I was looking for, the Snowman Cannon. 2,765 points. Completely done with the Frost Moon, I mine some Chlorophyte, gather a few mushrooms, and craft a total of 2300 mini nukes. But let's kill some bosses, shall we? Starting with the Golem, who after unlocking and making my way through the Jungle Temple, and after building a quick boss platform, I summon. Man, this fight is easy. My Snowman Cannon is able to tear through the Golem's first form, and the Chain Gun plus the actually good Nano Bullets tear through its second form. And with that, the Golem is defeated seven times in a row. And yet somehow, I didn't get even a single eye of the golem. But no matter, because it's time to take on the Duke Fishron. I fish him out, easily make it to a second phase, but get murdered in cold blood by a bubble. I re-up on potion, then go in for attempt number two. I once again get to a second phase, but my bullets don't do enough damage to protect me from shark runs. And I am killed yet again. A blood moon happens that night, so to quench the fire that is the comment section, I figure I might as well take on the dreaded Dread Nautilus. As expected, it's a pretty easy fight, and the Dread Nautilus, alongside the Blood Eel and Hema Goblin Shark, are defeated. The Blood Moon ends, and I summon the Duke yet again. And this time, I decide to use Rockets, which apparently works as I get the Duke into his final form, to which I die within seconds. It's pretty clear at this point that things aren't working out Duke Fishrun-wise, and unfortunately that pattern continues for the next 8 attempts. After being defeated so many times, I head into the dungeon in hopes of getting a Paladin's Shield to craft a Frozen Shield and a Black Belt for making Master Ninja Gear. I very luckily get a Black Belt pretty quick, but it takes me a while and many a death to get the Paladin's Shield. I craft up their respective accessories and equipped a Magiluminescence in my extra accessory slot, meaning that it is once again time to face the Duke. I spawn him in for the 12th, 13th, 
and then 14th attempt. And by using what I like to call the Bringen Sie den Tornado auf die Oberst platform Dimit ich mir Spielraum habe method on my 14th go, I survive long enough to get the Duke into his final form. But busy trying not to die, I forget to do my genius method and get trapped against the world border. The tornado goes away, but just like it, I'm in a downward spiral, pushing me all the way down to maybe 5 health. Yet after 13 failed attempts, the Duke Fishron is defeated once and for all. Out of pure relief, adrenaline, and shock, I just sit there flabbergasted, until I gradually switch back into reality, grab the loot, and at base, place my well-earned relic. With the Empress of Light being my next target, and knowing very well how much room the fight requires, I nearly double the arena in size, then catch a prismatic lacewing and summon the Empress of Light by killing it. I know this fight like the back of my hand at this point, so despite its absurd length given my low DPS, I never get knocked down too low, and the Empress of Light is defeated dropping one of my favorite accessories alongside a new set of wings. And while I planned on just relaxing for a bit after taking on two royals, while doing a bit of arena maintenance, a Martian probe swoops down, and much to my dismay, begins the Martian Madness. I usually hate this event with the burning passion of a thousand suns, but for whatever reason, it honestly wasn't bad. I of course did die a decent few times, but I also pulled off killing the second Martian saucer that spawned, so I really can't be too mad. And amazingly, the Martians are soon defeated. A day or two later and the first solar eclipse of the playthrough happens, and as expected, it's extremely easy with the weapons I have. I die to a few pinheads, kill a few mothrons, and night soon arrives, ending the eclipse. Figuring I might as well finish off all the events, I craft a pumpkin medallion and summon the pumpkin moon, which is actually perfect timing as I recorded this bit on Halloween. The night is pretty fun, and I'm not only able to defeat a few morning woods and pumpkins, but I also do it all deathless. The night fades to day and rewards me with two 2,905 points, but it's time to move on to the final event. I place an Eternia Crystal in its pedestal, opening the portals and beginning the invasion. The first wave is a total piece of cake. The second wave requires a bit more effort, but is still easily dealt with. Then comes the third wave, consisting of goblins, javelin throwers, wyverns, kobolds, and drakens all of which immediately overwhelm me, ensuring the crystal's destruction. Now, there are seven total waves, and I wasn't even able to make it to wave three, but of course, I give it another go, which goes nearly the same as before, except I don't die, just the crystal does. I tried a few more times, but ultimately, they all go about the same. The furthest I ever made it was to wave four, and for that reason, I know that this event is completely impossible with the weapons I have at my disposal. I even went as far as getting the rest of the Ice Queen's magic weapons Weapons, which took two hours by the way, and trying to defeat it like that. But I was never able to kill a dark mage, let alone Betsy. So while I hate to say it, the show must go on, and the Old One's army must remain undefeated. With that complete, I have officially arrived at the endgame. The lunatic cultist and the moonlord himself, the only bosses that remain. And in preparation for the coming chaos, I reforge all my accessories to menacing, including my already plus 3% damage soaring insignia that cost 14 platinum and 52 gold to get that one extra percent of damage. Feeling nervous as ever, I burn the cultists alive, awakening their lunatic leader. And man does this fight end up being a doozy. I do the regular biz for a while, but while trying to kill a a corruptor, I accidentally hit one of the lunatic's imposter selves, spawning the dreaded phantasmal dragon. Yet thanks to the snowman cannon, let's just say it wasn't a problem. The duel continues, getting me all the way down to three hearts, with 15 seconds left until I can heal. I somehow survive, drink a healing potion, and the cultist enters phase two. For the rest of the fight, I seem to be trapped below half health, but I press on until once again I hit one of the imposters by accident. Yet the poor thing barely gets to see the light of day. A regular wyvern also joins the fight, but is soon taken care of. Rest in peace, O wyverns three. May your now joined souls be ever free. After a genuinely scary fight that kept me consistently low, the lunatic cultist is defeated, throwing me directly into the madness called the Solar Pillar. The solar enemies have never bothered me too much, and they're even less deadly with the Skeletron Arena keeping the scrollers at bay. I easily complete the pillar death free, then get absolutely jump scared when the Nebula Pillar is right next to my base. Unlike the Solar Pillar, I don't even have the words to express my deep hatred towards each and every one of the Nebula enemies. They are just all the worst and I die 9 times before I'm able to destroy the pillar itself. 
Next is the Stardust Pillar, which quickly devolves into chaos. I die four times in total, and it's defeated. I teleport to the Vortex Pillar and get dismantled in seconds. By returning, I'm able to set up the classic six block defense, making the rest of the pillar super easy and fast. I get through all the enemies I need to kill, then destroy the pillar. And alongside its destruction, impending doom approaches. I brew up some potions, head to the arena, and ready for battle, the almighty Minlord awakens. Using both my rockets and chain gun, I take down both of his hands without major injury, but take several devastating hits soon after. And while trying to dodge the main death ray, I get hit by a secondary laser and the Moon Lord is victorious. While my defeat was devastating, as it would have been really epic to win on the first go, it did show me that this might just be possible, and my thirst for revenge caused on my greatest opponent once more. After over 60 hours, countless challenges, and the greatest of triumphs, the once mighty Moonlord and the whole of Terraria are defeated using nothing but the most festive of weapons. I return home, place the final relic upon its mount, and admire the world I've spent so long creating. All the way from the Eater of World Struggles, Hellish Wall of Flesh Fight, Insane Queen Slime Battle, Annoying Amount of Frost Moons, Seemingly Unkillable Duke Fishron, to the final duel between me and the Moon Lord. In celebration of my greatest victory yet, I decide to open one final present. This was definitely one of the hardest challenges I've done, yet trying to figure out how to fight all the different bosses and events was a blast. And hey, if you enjoyed it as well, I would seriously appreciate it if you subscribed. I have some really big plans for 2024 I guarantee you won't want to miss. But enough chitter chatter, if you're watching this in December, have a great holiday season. If you're not watching this in December, have a great regular season. But thank you so so much for watching, and see ya!